Um, we, our next speaker is uh, um, our city councilor, Charles Tontar. Um, I believe we have uh, a few other uh, councilors uh, here in the, in the um, stands. Uh, Afroz Khan, I believe, is here with us. Are there, are there any other councilors here in the, uh, that should be recognized? Okay. Well, very good. Um, I understand from Mr. Tatar that uh, he's recently uh, retired from Merrimack College as an economics professor, and he is very involved with our city council and will, is here to share his thoughts. So, thank you. I'm uh, here because the council president, Gary Connell, could not make it. Uh, and he sends his regrets. Uh, <clears throat> you can judge the sincerity of that comment when I tell you that he is currently sailing from Martinique to uh, Granada. And so uh, he asked me to fill in for him, and I'm happy to do it. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to take a little different tact here and play off something that the representative said. In my first year in the city council, we had uh, and ordered before us, which was to ban uh, plastic bags. <clears throat> and uh, it, was, uh, it was not an easy vote for any of the 11 councillors, uh, and, and there was a lot, of, a lot of conflict and a lot of heat. Uh, it eventually passed six to five, and we were one of the first communities, after the mayor signed it, the first communities in the Commonwealth uh, to pass a ban on plastic bags. Uh, and we sent a signal, and we knew in doing that that we were starting a movement. Now Boston is banned, and I, and I trust soon the entire state will be banning uh, plastic bags. And, uh, and we, we feel a new book will start. But I want to tell you something, right? It wasn't an easy vote, right? It was not an easy vote, and it's incredibly important that citizens who feel, for instance, in support of plastic bags, uh, banning plastic bags, or in support of pay to throw, uh, or in support of banning glyphosate, the latter two are in committees in our city council right now. It's incredibly important that we hear from you, all right? Because we're gonna hear from the other side. And if we don't hear from you, uh, that six to five vote, for instance, on plastic bags could have easily gone the other way. Before I retired, I, I was, uh, I taught uh, environmental economics if I can get this thing to work. I did not teach anything to do with technology. There we go. Um, and uh, being an economist, I don't know if you know this, but in the 19th century, economics was known as the dismal science. Uh, it's also known as that by any student who's taken an intro to economics course. Um, and and I'm, I'm gonna fulfill uh, that expectation and that, and that characterization uh, in, in environmental economics, especially among the policy side of economics, uh, pol of uh, environmental economics, uh, our hair has been on fire for some time now. <clears throat> there are environmental um, economists and policymakers who have been working on this since the, for 60 years, right? Who have given up? Who, who in, in their 80s, right? Who have said, who now say that it's too late. Right? We have wasted our opportunity to stop. Not all of us. We may be right now in a five-year window, and a lot of policymakers think that, a five-year window to address climate change. And it may be the only opportunity we have. There are some analysts who argue that the planet will not be habitable by the end of this century for human beings. Uh, a lot of People sometimes say that we have to save the planet. Let me tell you something, the planet will be just fine. There just won't be any human beings on it. Bill McGibbons, uh, who is a, a scholar from, uh, an analyst, an activist from, uh, he's, a, he's at uh, uh, Vermont, uh, had an article in the, in the uh, Globe this morning, and also this quote from The Guardian, I think it, it summarizes the task that we confront. Uh, he says, forget early warning signs and canaries in coal mines. We're now well into the middle of the climate change era with its epic reshaping of our home planet. 
Monday's news from two separate studies, it's this past Monday, made it clear that the frozen portions of the Earth are now in violent and dramatic flux. The biggest physical features on the planet are now changing in ways they haven't since long before the dawn of human history. On the most distant poles and on the highest peaks, we see almost unfathomable shifts. The only question is whether a similar shift is possible in our politics. Planet Earth is miles outside its comfort zone. How many of us will go beyond ours? This expo, and I want to thank the people who organized it. I also want to thank the many environmental activists who are here and are out there manning tables because they are our future. And we need them to double and triple their efforts. Thank you. Thank you.